My name is Eric O'Dell. I've been in Macon as a citizen since uh, 1994. I was a student at Mercer starting in 1988. Um, I was a longtime employee at the Museum of Arts and Sciences, had various roles as a curator. And then just over a year ago, I was appointed as the Assistant Professor of Art in the Mercer University Art Department. And throughout all of those different positions and professional incarnations that I've had, I've always maintained a studio here in downtown Macon and have created predominantly paintings and drawings over that time. And I think that's one of the great quandaries for artists is that there is, especially in the short term, you have to make a living, you have to, you have to get by from day to day, pay the bills, have a family, you know, a mortgage. Uh, for me, it, it, it goes back to something Flannery O'Connor said, it's the habit of art. And so what I've done is I've just made it a priority whenever I get some free time. Um, my wife is amazing and she understands that it has a lot to do with who I am um, as a person um, that I just get to my studio and I practice. Uh, it's nothing glorious, it's not like it's enjoyable to leave the house at 8 o'clock at night and stay till 2 painting, um, but over the years and accumulation of those hundreds and perhaps thousands of hours is just what it takes. Um, and, and I feel even today that I am happy with my work, but I also know that I'll never stop learning how to paint. So to carve out that time is, is, is a real task. It's asking a lot of your family and friends, but um, if they really care for you, they know that it's essential to who you are. So I've had a lot of mercy and, uh, and grace around me in my life. So that, that's, that's made it happen, yeah. The practice of doing art, and if I had any kind of pedagogical theory, which is a horrible term, but I feel that it's important for me to be able to show them to do anything I ask them to do. When I was a kid in Panama City working at marinas, there was this little thing that the, that the local boat guys used to sing every now and again, it was, it was, uh, was kind of silly, but it went to pelican, 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 your bee colds more than your belly can. And I've always felt like that I can't, I, I have to be able to do as much as I say. And so my practice and my always doing the painting and the drawing, I feel now uh, when I teach that no matter what the situation, whether it's in a studio in Macon, or if it's at the Parthenon in Athens or at the Duomo in, in Florence, that I can sit down and demonstrate and show and solve a technical problem at any time in any of the mediums we work with. And so a lot of time I spend teaching is, is providing lessons and ideas, but I think the most meaningful time is when I'm one-on-one -on -one with a student and we're working and seeing something together. It's wonderful, actually. I mean, the group that I'm in at the Arts Exchange is the only thing we really share is space. There's no formal relationship through a nonprofit or an organization. But we've always sort of been cheerleaders for each other, you know, sort of slapping each other on the back, going to each other's exhibits. Um, you know, if I find an old beat up Xerox machine, I know Jason Frost, the printmaker, could really use it. Um, someone comes across an old beat up brush, they give it to me. Um, my, photo, my work is documented by Marianne Bates, who's one of the most amazing people and photographers I've ever met and so you know she shoots my work I give her a drawing we're good friends and so it's one of those things in the best sense that if it when it's great it's one plus one equals three uh, art is lonely enough when you do it and you're practicing in your studio but it is great to have a community of folks that at least you see on the street and you know that you share that kind of suffering and 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 you know even when you're not aware of it that there are in a weird way people kind of looking out for you you know whether it's for opportunities or resources or hey eric you left your door open at the studio i shut it for you right that makes all the difference in the world you know there's a lot of ways i think to talk about painting in a way painting is that sort of thing that's infinite even though it seems like it's limited by size and, and medium but you know there's different incarnations and subject matter and processes and you know going from drawing to painting is like going from the acoustic guitar to a symphony there's so many options uh, for me one way that i've explained it is painting is like being an animal trainer uh, I, I want the lion to roar but i don't want it to eat me so I don't want to over control the paint. I, I, want, I love the process. I love the way it drips and the way it flies and lands and, and spreads and, and smells and, and all those things. So I try not to over manipulate it, even though my work comes across, I think, as, as, as very realistic. Um, there's an awful lot of painting unleashed underneath and in these things. Um, and, and look, you know, it's, I'm in, I have a love affair with my paintings. I, I, I love them and I wrestle with them and I yell at them. And, 
you know, um, I've, I've thrown them against the wall. Not that, you know, that's not what I do with my wife, trust me. But, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a passionate relationship. And um, I, can't, I can't be objective or indifferent to that. I'm, I'm deeply committed to what paint is as a material, the history of it, the processes of it. And so I want that to be embedded in each piece that I do. I want it to be alive. I want it to be to be open to accident. I want it to be open to process. I want it to be open to some control, you know? So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a large, epic thing for me um, that just seems to have infinite possibilities. Um, so Becky's Dream, it's not in the exhibit. It was a very hard piece to do. I mean, logistically, the size of it, it's a six by four or four by six. Um, I, I've been fortunate to have some amazing people in life, like all of us, and, and uh, uh, Becky Williams was my mother-in-law and uh, is one of the strongest people I'd ever known. I worked a shutdown in college at a paper mill. That's, that's no joke, right? Hard hat, steel-toed boots, rough people. Uh, my father-in-law worked that circuit, and his wife, Becky, ran the tool truck, and everyone snapped too when she was around. You, you behaved around, around Miss Becky. And uh, a few years ago, she came down with lung cancer, and, and it, it absolutely decimated her. And um, I have a, a memory of being on her front porch in North Florida and uh, seeing a thunderstorm fall apart at sunset. And I uh, took some pictures, and, and she was a thunderstorm. She had that kind of power, and, and it was a metaphor for that. And so I titled it Becky's Dream because as we sat there watching this thunderstorm fall apart, it was, she was watching all of her grandchildren play in her yard, and, and I sort of figured was horrible and tragic, she was leaving us, and she would leave shortly after that. But um, it, it was a powerful dissipation. And, you know, from an aesthetic point, it was just absolutely beautiful. And so that painting was a, was a gift to my father-in-law um, down in Florida, so it, that's, that's where it ought to be, in that same house. That's what, there's, there's several pieces that soon after that, I would lose my own mother, um, somewhat unexpectedly. And uh, many of these images come from the, that day that that happened, uh, going to a park near my house with my brother. I mean, that's, that's sad, but it's also, I think, um, hopefully, ultimately, triumphant. You know, I, th I think art is, is, is a triumph of existence. Um, you know, Michelangelo is as true today as he was 500 years ago. That, that's pretty amazing. Science, not so much. You know, the world's not quite as flat as it was back then. Uh, so hopefully, you know, if anything, that's the kind of gift I can give Becky for what she gave me and my mom. Look, straight up, I, this sort of silliness about are the arts important and should we support them and should they have finances and should we be teaching it is, is uh, one of the most ridiculous uh, things to be worried about. It's also one of the things that in the future I think we'll look back and find absolutely and utterly ridiculous that that was even an issue. I've been overseas a lot, never dreamed I would, you know, coming from the panhandle of Florida. <laughs> but I know without a doubt that the greatest resource of this country and maybe of mankind is, is creativity. That's our best, that's our best uh, natural resource here and it's our best export. Um, you can't walk through Europe or any part of the world without seeing some of our culture, good or bad, but it is. Um, and to think that that is different in engineering or science or medicine or art or in technology is uh, patently absurd. And I think that the arts just simply deal with it in a more direct way. And to, to, if you denigrate or put down or don't fund or push to the side or treat not as seriously the arts, then what you're saying is to be human is not important. That's how important that is to me. I paint as if my life depended on it because it does. And I think that holds true for what it means for us as a human race.